um, the next section of notes. And in your next section of notes, we're going to look at a solution, remember, which is a different name for a homogeneous mixture. Um, but a solution can be a solid, it can be a liquid, or it can be a gas. Um, and you're going to have two or more things uh, mixed together. And when you have two or more things mixed together, there are two components to your mixture. You have solutes and you have a solvent. Um, there's only one solvent. And then you can have multiple solutes, but typically it's only going to be one solvent and one solute coming together to make a solution. And there are many times, especially when we get to the math with the little m molality um, equations, you're going to have to figure out what is your solute and what is your solvent, because you're going to take one number and you're going to do one thing with it. You're going to take the other number and do another thing with it, and you divide your answer. So we have solute and solvent, which are going to make up your solution. So the first thing that we need to look at uh, with your solute and your solvent is we need to figure out what the word soluble means. So when we look at the word soluble, that means that it can be dissolved. Insoluble means that it cannot be dissolved. For example, you put sugar into water. That sugar dissolves away. That sugar is soluble in water. But if I take um, a rock, like gravel, and I put that into water, that rock is insoluble in water. It does not dissolve. So some things dissolve and some things do not. Um, and when we're looking at your um, things being able to be dissolved, um, we need to figure out you know, which component is which, solute or solvent. So your solute, well, let me go to the next one, um, is the thing that is dissolving away. So if you were soluble in a pool, you jump in the pool, you would dissolve away. We obviously don't, which is a very good thing for us. Um, but you would be the solute, water is the solvent. So the thing that dissolves away the sugar in water, the salt in water, the Kool-Aid powder in water, um, those are all dissolving, they're getting smaller, so those are your solute. The solvent is the thing that is doing the dissolving. So it's actually breaking up the thing, like the chunk, into smaller pieces. And how that happens is the um, chunk hits the big particle and it breaks it apart. Hits it, breaks it apart, hits it, breaks it apart, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the unit. But for right now, you just need to know that the solute is the thing that is breaking apart and getting smaller. The solvent is the dissolver and it's the thing that is actually breaking it away. Now, there's three kind of ways of figuring out which is the solute and which is the solvent. Um, typically, when you look at it, it's going to, um, the solvent is going to stay the same state of matter, and the solute is going to change the state of matter. Um, because it's breaking down smaller, it's actually going into that other component. Um, so, for example, you put solid sugar into liquid water. The final result, the sugar water, is a liquid. So the sugar is your solute. Um, normally what we're going to do with the math is we're going to look at the numbers. And when you look at the numbers, it'll say you have 5 grams of sugar. You have 25 grams of water. So you know that you have your water is your solvent because there's more of it. Um, so that might be the percentage, it might be the mass, but no matter what, you're going to have more solvent, fewer amount, less, lesser amount of your solute. Sorry, I'm very tired. Um, and then also the way that it's worded. Sometimes it'll say like, this is added to this. That's your big component um, of weighing... Of, Man, I'm sorry. Uh, that's your big way of knowing which is your solute and your solvent. So it might say, um, like, red food dye is added to water. The red food dye, because it's added to the water, is your solute. Your water is your solvent. So you have to look at how it's actually um, worded in order to figure that out. So you're going to see at the very beginning things like this, um, where you're going to have to figure out what is your solute and what is your solvent. Um, I don't have a way of marking this up. Wait, nope, I don't. Um, so I'm just going to kind of talk through them. But we have ocean water, and we're taking away all of the other components except for the salt and the water. So when we look at the salt and the water, the final result of that is the um, liquid. So water is your solvent, salt is your solute. 
You can also think about it in terms of how much is there. There's a far less salt than water, so salt is your solute because of that. When you're making Kool-Aid, you have the powder, you have the sugar, and you have the water. You put the powder and the sugar into the water and they dissolve away. Um, so water is your solvent. The powder and the sugar, both of them, are both considered to be solutes. Remember, you can have more than one solute. There's only one solvent. In this one, it says antifreeze is 10% water and 90% ethylene glycol. In this case, we have more ethylene glycol than water. So water in this case is different than these two. My water is my solute. My solvent is ethylene glycol. Steel, this is a solid um, when it's all done, that you have to mix it in the liquid state. Um, but when it's all done, it's 98.5% iron, 1.5% carbon. There is more iron than carbon. So that means that your iron is your solvent, carbon is your solute. Soda is syrup, water, and carbon dioxide gas. So they all get mixed together. Um, the majority of your soda is water. You probably don't know that offhand, um, but the majority of it is water, so that means that water is your solvent. The CO2 and the syrup are gonna be your solute. Um, air is a gaseous solution. Um, again, you may or may not know this, but nitrogen is the biggest component of air. It's not oxygen, and we'll actually talk about that in tomorrow's video. But your nitrogen is your solvent, because there's most of your air is made up of nitrogen. The oxygen and all the other gases are all considered to be the solute, because they all dissolve into the nitrogen. And then your 18 karat gold jewelry, I'm gonna move this up so you can see the different components. 75% of your 18 karat gold is actually made out of gold. And then your other 25% and it's made out of carb carbon, copper and zinc and silver and cobalt. So these are all going to be your solute. My solvent is gold. So typically we're gonna look at how much is there. You always have more solvent than solute. Um, and then you also have the other two ways of knowing as well. Now, right along with this, we have something called the universal solvent. If you noticed, most of the time, in all cases but one, the um, water, when it was listed, it was your solvent. Water's weird. I've said that many times. Um, with water being weird, it is polar and it has hydrogen bonds, so it breaks apart a lot of things that normal covalent compounds wouldn't actually break apart. So because of its polarity, because of those hydrogen bonds, um, they actually end up water end up breaking apart many other things so it's considered to be the universal solvent and that just means that it breaks apart many 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 different things um, so it will turn a lot of things into solutes so because of its odd characteristics it's going to be considered the solvent 95 percent of the time um, very few times is it not actually considered to be the solvent so if you guys have any questions, make sure you ask. Otherwise, have a good day.